Hello, I'm not an installer, I'm not a cable puller. I'm going to experiment with LDF 4 50 uh, plenum rated uh, dielectric, air dielectric uh, cable. We've done some training today uh, through the manufacturer engineer, and I want to share uh, an experiment about uh, bending radius. The engineer, the manufacturer trainer, showed us how to properly install the uh, uh, DIN connectors and the um, low pin connectors for probably for the uh, next 5 generation or 5G uh, uh, cellular networks that require higher frequency and a very low pin. And um, we, we had uh, good results in the past with uh, their brand. But uh, since we may approach this uh, new, newer low PIM technologies, uh, we wanted to have a better, uh, better training from the manufacturer point of view. So I'm going to share the, an experiment. Uh, you don't take this one as a training video. I'm not training you to do anything. I'm just uh, playing around with uh, some cable and uh, a measuring tool and it's up to you if you want to take some value or not. We played with uh, this type of cable which uh, again is air dielectric. And this is after using a stripping tool. Which you can buy from the manufacturer or from their dealers and this is the central conductor which is spaced out or is kept at a cons constant distance uh, spacing from the outer jacket the uh, grounding aluminum jacket this is a corrugated uh, aluminum made jacket and this is this central conductor is made of aluminum according to the manufacturer engineer at least aluminum with a copper coating copper coating is being used to improve the electrical performance at those high frequency so we know that at higher frequencies the signals tend to travel at the surface so to make the cable cheaper and lighter they use aluminum and again this is uh, just a coating but on top of that copper you will uh, find sort of a hot glue. It's, it's a glue that they recommend to remove using a uh, abrasive sponge. Uh, I've used different method but don't use a knife or anything uh, metal to scrape off this glue. You will need to remove this glue when you put the connector in. So again this is not a training video. Um, I did remove the glue as you can see it's shiny, it doesn't have any single scratch on it on the on the copper which gives me a better contact with uh, mating sides of the connector so I use this different technique to remove that uh, that glue it's very very fast very clean very easy you can even remove it with a fingernail but I'm not going to disclose how I do it because again it's not a training video and that glue prevents this uh, spacers to slide around and uh, get together in one spot and leave exposed a longer piece of copper that could uh, easily bend or uh, get closer to the ground uh, uh, modifying the uh, the local impedance and I cut a section of the cable so to show you what's inside you see those spacers and you see the corrugated cable is corrugated like uh, it has those uh, grooves in, in and out and I bent it on purpose to show you how it maintains the physical stability and performance the physical structure but I did a kink on purpose so you see the cable is kinked and that corrugation part went right into the central conductor so we are not concerned about shorts we we are concerned about maintaining the uh, spacing between this central conductor and the outside uh, grounding jacket 
any squeeze, any uh, deformation, any uh, change in the structure and shape of the cable, even uh, making it oval, like I've seen into one of the installers that they uh, squeezed it and they made it oval. And the cable works in a similar principle with a water pipe. If you squeeze the cable somewhere, that means you induce or you introduce a higher resistance or local resistance. And it tells you that the amplifier before, the power amplifier in our case, has higher, uh, it requires to work harder. So if you put out power and some of the power comes back because it cannot go all the power, it cannot, uh, all the signal cannot go through the cable to the antenna. Some of that is going to push back towards the amplifier, making the amplifier work harder. So we call that reflected power. So uh, pumps work harder and your heart work harder when you have a blood clot somewhere in the brain or in the heart or in a, a, an artery. So it's important to maintain the uh, clean arteries, uh, clean pipes, <laughs> clean cables or uh, not bent cable. So these are not flexible like our arteries, but uh, it can take some bending. And I'm going to conduct an experiment and I'll take you to the other location where I will show you what I'm going to do with a, a power meter. So I have this setup here, where I drew a couple of circles, and you can uh, consider that I'm wrong, I'm not training you to do anything, but the way I was taught when I was uh, a kid, a young kid, this is a circle, if I complete the circle, this line, let's say if I take it like that all the way, from one side to another, we call it diameter. So this is 12 inch diameter and from the center of the circle I have 6 inches which is radius. And turning radius to me is I turn this 6 inches radius, turning radius. Bending radius it could be something else so don't quote me, I'm not teaching you anything. But in my case to preserve my way of thinking. I have 6 inches bending radius or 6, six inch turning radius, let's call it like that. Then 8 inches and 10 inches and 12 inches. And I already made uh, some testing, some tests in advance and I realized that a 12 inch radius it's not affecting the this piece of cable uh, which has two connectors at the end made by uh, this company Trilogy and the cable is made by the same company and the stripping tool made for the same company so we keep connectors m um, matching the uh, cable because the stripping tool has to be for that specific cable and for those connectors And earlier I got uh, better numbers, but I made a change. I changed an adapter and a connector, and now I'm getting, at 1 gigahertz, I'm getting 31.5 dB. And at 2 gigs, 2 gigahertz, I'm getting 22, 21.99, so 22 dB. I uh, set the range from 1 to 2 gigs. Uh, so it's higher frequency than um, the projects we work on. But for the cellular communications, you will need to go all the way to 2.1 or uh, if it's 5G, two, uh, up to 3.5 or something like that. So I'm not uh, familiar with 5G technology, but uh, you would have to measure higher. And today I read about Comscope the same type of cable but made by Comscope, they specified that it works 
up to 8.8 gigahertz so at this about maybe 10 inches bending radius actually it's even 8, 8 inches about 8 um, I'm getting no change I would say but let's do change the the rate of turn so I'm going to turn it a bit tighter so this would be about 5 inches I would say 5 inches and I have 31.2 31.3 at 1 gig and 21.8 so it changed a little bit tiny bit so if I turn it tighter so I still don't want to kink it but now it's about maybe 4 inches and I'm getting 30.9 and 21.6 so it changed a bit so I'm still not kinked yet now it's like uh, yeah this is about 4 inches I would say 31.13 so it's 31 about and 21.8 at higher frequency at 2 gigs so let me do even tighter so let's say like those cable pullers who don't know what's inside the cable they just pull cable because they have strong muscles I don't have strong muscle but I use the energy to think okay so this is a tighter maybe three inches 30.5 and 21.5 so it drops but it's not a lot so now it started to kink is like a uh, less than three inches 29.6 and 21.6 so we drop maybe one db now i'm kinking it 24.6 and 17.7 so it dropped two point something db and at lower frequency uh, almost four db 24 no almost six Al almost six so I'm kinking the cable you see it's kinked let's see what happens 14.3 and 10.4 wow it's like a double so once I got this kink it's dropped so it doubled the loss in the cable or the power power that you need to put to compensate that loss I don't know how to explain it in the simple terms so I would uh, do a cable loss experiment let's see what happens I never performed the cable loss a kinked cable loss experiment before I don't know what to expect but this is a cable that was kinked earlier and I just unbent it so I thought let's fix it so I made a mistake I'm in a field in a building or something nobody see me and bending the cable and I I'll fix it and I don't know the cable loss before I, I have no idea but let's start it from now it's 0.2 dB at 1 gig and 0.6 dB at 2 gigs, 2 gigahertz, right? I don't know if the camera can show you some numbers. Okay, so now the camera can see something. And let me kink the cable. Do something stupid. Like uh, I've seen stuff on the field. So, oh, look what happened. So, I did not get much of a loss. But you see how the cable changed uh, the shape of the waveform change. So there are other measurements that would show me what happens, what actually happened during the kink. I mean kinky nastier. Let's see. So I I'll squeeze. So you see, it's still not shorting. 
so the loss is not significant so it, this kink will not show it tells you it will not show you on the cable loss measurement let's see what where it shows so right now it's kinked I'm uh, measuring VSWR the cable is kinked a bit and I guess it's touching somewhere inside because it's jumping up and down. I have 1.21 at lower frequency and 1.44 at higher frequency with a 50 ohms load. Right, So 50 ohms at the end is like a perfect antenna and I'm supposed to get like almost nothing. 1.0 something with a perfect cable, perfect connectors and perfect uh, stuff. So, but once I move this thing, I'm moving that is jumping like crazy, is jumping up and down. And it tells you that actually that kink causes a short somewhere. You see, there's, it's already going up going up so kink it nicely and of course I destroyed that piece of cable but I'm getting 2.6 1.89 at lower frequency so you got the idea if you if you kink the cable and if you want to repair it uh, I don't think it's going to work I mean if you have lots of signal in the system and you can afford those losses but what happens the installers the cable pullers generally don't know what they are doing and I mean they know how to pull cable they do well way better than I do but generally they don't measure the system and if they measure the system uh, they get some numbers and they look at the numbers and say, oh yeah, that's within the range because they are trained to look at numbers, ranges and they don't have to think deep. Some of those do. They are uh, real technicians and they understand uh, the link budget and how a system works, where the splitter, what the value of the splitter. They can f correct in case the system doesn't work so they can... Uh, install different splitter values and stuff but generally when they hire uh, cheaper companies who hire uh, younger kids who just finish the school they don't know much they don't know what is in an inside of an antenna what happens if you drill a screw into uh, the antenna how uh, the antenna performs according to the ground uh, according to where the antenna is located, if it's near a wall or near a metal or something, they have no clue because they have to build that experience uh, unless they went through some engineering school. But if they went through the engineering, they will not, they are not willing to pull cables. Okay, so generally you get this type of, uh, let's call it dudes who have muscle power and they don't have to think especially if they work for a larger company. If they think, then the manager say, you know what, I'm uh, paying you to work not to think. I have people who think and I pay them for thinking. So that's kind of a mentality in a big corporate uh, environment, corporate environment. So that's why I'm showing you here. If you are a curious person, if you are an installer or something like that, if you want to get outside of your box, uh, that happens with a cable that uh, get kinked by accident and again this is not a training video I hope uh, you got the essence and if I made a couple of mistakes here and here uh, forgive me I don't have the uh, skill to talk uh, about this type of topic but if you enjoyed it uh, share it thank you bye bye